Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a not so common technique of painting. Um, I'm going to start by painting the whole thing black and white, and you may even want to leave it that way, but then I'll show you how to add color to it. I'm using acrylic paint, white, black, and that'll be what I start with. And then later on, I'll add these colors. This is yellow ochre, red, two different shades of green, and red ochre. And for my brushes, I'm using um, two different sizes of um, hog bristle, uh, filbert hog bristle brushes, and two different size angle brushes, synthetic. All right, and I'm going to start with my larger hog bristle brush and go ahead and put in my sky. So I just want to pick up some white and I'm going to have some clouds in the sky, but, and I've started with a gray background so that um, I don't have to work so hard to get all of my colors in because the main color is gray in this, uh, in the black and white version. So I'm just using my hog bristle brush to kind of scumble in a little cloud here and there. With this hog bristle brush, you can scrub and make these soft edges. And I've already got my outline drawn on too. And I used regular pencil for that because this is a black and white painting so um, it's going to get covered. Now, the, <clears throat> the closer you get to the horizon, the smaller your clouds are going to get. So, like, I might have some really small clouds back here and some really big ones up here. So, keep that in mind to make it look, to make it all make sense. You got to get the perspective right. Now, once you've got all your clouds in, you can come back and put in um, brighter spots. So I'm using more paint on my brush and, and I'm not doing a lot of blending. I'm just putting it on there and leaving it. And now I'm gonna put in some of my darker clouds so I'm going to pick up. Remember, avoid these colors because we're not we're not doing color right now. So I'm going to mix up a dark gray. I just want it to be darker than my uh, background color. I'm not even rinsing my brush because this is all, until I try to go in with either just black or just white, there's no reason to rinse the brush. So now I'm going to mix up my mountain color. And 
it is kind of going to be about the shade of the background. But I want to go ahead and form it. So I'm just using the top edge of my hog bristle brush. to form that the edge of the mountain because I want it to be um, I don't want a hard line I want it to be kind of soft then part of the mountain over here Now I'm going to start putting my grass in. So I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to go right against that mountain. All the way over to the barn. And I'm just gonna kind of pounce this in because it's um, it's grass, so it's gonna be textured. So just kind of dab it in. You can leave parts of the background showing through, which will just save you time later trying to put more texture in. Now I want to make sure that back here where my grass touches my mountain, I want a soft edge there. So I'm just going to tap that out. Now with my angle brush, I'm going to start on my silo. Now I see one section here that's really light because the light is coming from the left. So I'm going to go ahead and brighten up that edge. And with a darker shade, I'm keeping my brush strokes going um, in this kind of arched direction because the angle that we're looking at the silo from, like we're looking up at it, so it's going to be kind of arched in that direction. And if you end up covering up too much of your white, you can always come back and put more in. So as I do this, I'm trying to kind of put in some of those little sections like it's, um, I guess, maybe made out of metal panels. And then I'm going to go quite a bit darker for this right side.
to come back with my smaller angle brush and clean this up a little bit. to my brush so that I can come back with white. I want this side to really pop like it's catching a lot of light. Yeah, I want to get this angle up here going right with the, um, the top of the silo. And it's a dome, so your brush strokes are going to change as you come over. So over here they go this way. Right here they go straight down, and then over here they go this way. All right, now with my larger angle brush, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the barn. And a lot of it's just gonna be white, but there's gonna be other shades in too. But because our light is coming from over here, this side of the roof is catching a lot of it. And I'm basically just tapping this on. I'm not really brushing it because everything in this is kind of textured, so. Again, use your, use your background that you've already got on there and you won't have to do so much work.
kind of this the side of the barn here I'm gonna skip a little section here for the eave and then with that without too much paint on my brush I'm dragging straight down And then I'm going to do the same thing all across the front. So even though I'm angling my brush right here, I still, I'm not going to come this way. My brush is angled, but I'm still going to come straight down. So angle that pull straight down. All right, now I've got this darker shade. that I wanna tap in to make it look really dark right up under that eave. I'm going to wipe my brush and kind of dry brush a little shadow coming down. You got to catch this while it's still wet to do this. But I want to keep make sure I keep my brush strokes going straight down. Okay, and then, wipe my brush. I want my paint thin for this. I'm gonna put in these boards. So this is two separate sections right here. Okay. This top section has the vertical boards and then the bottom section and it actually has a doorway here which is a little bit thicker line and then And the thinner lines on the side. Same thing over here. All right, now I'm going to have this door open. So it's kind of going to be dark in there, but as you As you come down, kind of lighten it a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and come back with white between those boards. here and there. Alright, now while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and put my fence posts in. I'm going to use my small angle brush. I want almost black, like a charcoal color. 
All right, so my fence posts are coming. I've got one starting right here. Let's see. Put one in there. This one would be the same size because it's just as far away. But as they come this way, they kind of angle, which makes them look closer together. And they get bigger as they get closer. Or they look like they get bigger. So these are going to look really close together right here. But as you come closer, you're slowly getting farther apart and um, bigger. Now this one will be the same size as these. Okay, and then make sure your paint is thin. And I'm gonna put in some horizontal. First I want to form the tops of my posts. Um, those aren't so obvious, but these up here are squared off at the top. Now I can take that thin black and start putting these in. So I'm gonna have, let's see, I think I'll have three. Now keep your angle in mind and keep in mind the fact that these are going to get skinnier as they get out here. But this angle is always, you're always going from almost the top of this one to almost the top of that one. So I'm going to go ahead and, and at this point I'm getting, I'm using the um, skinny side of my brush because They look smaller back here. Now I'm going to have one here that, just for interest, I'm going to have one that kind of fell down. But then I want 
to go back to my angle. Now if you'll notice, now that we've got our dark fence in, this looks really washed out. It's because we need to darken up some of the darkest areas. Okay, now with the sun coming this way, the shadow of the barn is kind of angling off that way. So right here, you've got a little bit, but as you come this way, it gets wider. So that's the cast shadow from, from the barn. All right, now we need a cast shadow for the fence. And I also want to, before I do that, I want to put in some maybe a tree line back here. And I'm just tapping with that angle brush. Okay, and now my white needs to be whiter because acrylic paint just dulls when it dries. So usually with white, you have to come back and brighten it. Okay, now for the cast shadow from the fence. I have added some glazing liquid to my palette. If you don't have glazing liquid, you can use water. Glazing liquid works better, but water works too. So I'm gonna pick up some black, some glazing liquid. And, okay, I'll go ahead and put my fence post shadows in first. And because I added the glazing liquid to this, it's, um, it's not going to be as dark as the, the fence post. Now, these are thinner because we're seeing them at a different angle. So use the thin edge of the brush. And now we've got the, the top rail. The bottom rail. And the middle row.
And here and there, I'm just going to add some uh, some dark areas just to make just to break up some of this light area. But I'm doing this with the glazing liquid in it or water or whatever you ended up using. All right. Now, if you want to leave it black and white, then you're finished. That's it. Just dry it. Um, but if you want to add color, I'll show you how to do that. And um, even if you don't want to add color to this one, you might want to use this technique with another painting, so you still might want to watch. Um, so I'm going to dry this really good and come back to put my color on. All right, I've got this dry, and I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my color. Again, I'm using glazing liquid, but if you don't have glazing liquid, then you'll substitute it with water. So I'm going to start the same place I did before. You want to start farthest away. So I'm going to pick up some of my yellow ochre and some glazing liquid. And I'm going to go against my mountain here because I'm in the sky right now, not the mountain. And with this glazing liquid, you can, you'll still be able to see the, the color behind the clouds, or the black and white behind the clouds. I mean behind the color. You can see through it. And now to that glazing liquid, that I mean that glaze that I've made I'm gonna add a touch of red kind of warm up the sky toward the top Darken that just a little bit. Okay, now I'll switch to my smaller angle brush and I'm going to work on my mountain. So what I want to do first is mix up a color that I want and then I'll add the glazing liquid to it. I need to get my shade right first. And if you wanted to, you could put blue or purple mountains back there. I think that's a good shade. Okay, now for my grass, I'm switching back to the larger angle brush. So I want to mix up a, a shade that I'm happy with.
and then add some glazing liquid. Now I'm just going to go right over my fence. I'm not worried about it. Now remember this shadow is part of the brown too, so I'm going right over it. Okay, now I want to work on my silo. And I want it to look kind of rusty. So I'm just going to use some of that red ochre. Maybe put a little bit of yellow ochre with it. Too much. Okay, so with that rusty color, I'm just using the tip of my brush And just kind of tapping in some of that color. Okay, and that's it for the silo. So now I want to start on the barn. Um, I guess I'll start with the roof, which also has some rust on it. metal roof so it's gotten rusty and then for the barn Gonna be used both shades of red. And my glazing liquid. I'm going right over the fence. This glazing liquid is stuff that makes it so transparent that you can Go right over black. It needs a little a little more of that red ochre. With the thinner glaze of that shade I'm gonna brush it in here and kind of 
Add a little flavor to that. And now at this point, you can always come back and kind of put some little pops of color in without glaze, but you don't want to get too carried away with that because it kind of ruins the whole effect of the glaze look. But like if I want some of my boards to be more red, And also, since my sky is yellow, if I can find some glazing liquid that's clean, I'm going to make a yellow glaze and kind of brush on the side of the silo in the barn very lightly just to kind of add that glow from the sky to it all right guys I hope you enjoyed this technique and give it a try because it's it's a lot easier to paint it black and white and then add color than it is to paint it color to begin with I know that it's it seems weird because it's two different steps but it does save you a lot of time and trouble so give it a try and until next time thanks for watching bye guys